In my previous video, I showed how to do the CCS1 retrofit for older Model 3s. CCS Combo 1, also known as CCS1 for North America, but I'll just say CCS for the rest of this video for simplicity. For 2021 and newer, you will be able to charge directly with a CCS adapter without any modifications. Let's take a look at what I got today. I would like to thank EVBase for providing the CCS adapter today for me to review. They specialize in EV parts and accessories, including charging equipment, since 2015. I'll start with the package I received. As you can see, it is packed well for shipping. As I remove the tape and the bubble wrap, we can see the retail box inside. I'll rotate the box so you can see all of the sides and the information that is listed. By the way, TPC means Tesla Proprietary Connector. If you had seen my previous video showing the Tesla CCS adapter, you may notice that the packaging is very similar. I'll remove the tape on the front and fold the flap over to reveal what's on the inside. We now see the CCS adapter snugly fitted inside a foam support within the box. Pulling out the adapter, let's have a closer look. The front has the CCS port that will connect to the plug on a CCS charging station. I'll rotate it around for you to get a look. From what I see, this looks and feels exactly like the Tesla adapter that I did a previous video on. It feels pretty solid and has all the features, including the locking tab. On the back is the Tesla plug that will be inserted into the car's charging port. Here are some specs from the manufacturer. It has a max charging rate of 250 kilowatts. This of course depends on the speed of the CCS charging station. Note that there are 50 kilowatt, 100 kilowatt, 150 kilowatt, and 350 kilowatt CCS stations. You may be limited by the max kilowatt rating on each station. This has an IP54 rating, weatherproof design. The operating temperatures are from negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, and it is cold and heat resistant. The adapter is light and compact and easy to use. Remember my review of the Chatamo adapter that I did a few years ago about how big it was and it was limited to only 50 kilowatts of charging. The side-by-side -side videos of the front and back will show you just how similar they really are. This adapter offers many more opportunities to fast charge on trips. Essentially, all public Tesla and CCS stations are now available to you. EVBase has stated that they have sold over 5,000 units so far. I use the PlugShare app on my phone to find all of the CCS charging stations near my house. I found one location about two miles away, and it has four stations from EVGO. I bring up the EVGO app to get more info. It shows me the stations and the amount of kilowatts charging that they offer. This particular one looks like it will work well. Since my car had about 20% state of charge, I needed to drive around a bit to drain it to a bit less than 1% or two miles when I arrived at the station. Of course, the car was not happy about this and was reminding me to charge as soon as possible. Of the three stations, the large one on the right is the 350 kilowatt version, and that's the one I wanna test. Here I am arriving at the charging location and backing into the spot. Here's a good look at the station. It has an LCD screen in the center, and it has two connectors in the base, one on the left and one on the right. This one can charge two vehicles at the same time. The screen has buttons on the far left and right side that show the plugs that are either in use or not in use. You can press the info button to get an FAQ on how to charge. Press the price button to see the levels of pricing if you are a member paying by credit card or using the app. In my case, I will be using the app with a 30 cents a minute rate. 
I'm used to using pricing that's based on dollars per kilowatt hour. However, this is how EVgo does it in my area. With this type of cost, you would be best to use the charging from an extremely low state of charge and only charge up to what you need. You will see why later in the video. On the screen, it shows the steps to charge. Plug in the connector, authorize payment, and then charge up and go. Follow the instructions for the particular CCS station that you're using. Most will use these steps. I'll use the cable on the right hand side. I have the adapter in the trunk. Take the CCS adapter and align it so that the round part of the plug is on top. This by the way is the same shape as the J1772 AC plug. And the DC pins are the two large ones directly underneath. Insert the adapter into the plug handle and it will snap into place. Then open the Tesla charge port door and insert the CCS adapter with the plug attached to it in. It is a bit bulky, but nowhere near as awkward as using the Chatamo adapter. Try to extend the cable as long as possible to put less strain on the port. If you're using the credit card, go to the station and swipe or insert the card into the reader. I'm using the EVgo app, so this is the screen from my phone. Press the left or right CCS icon, which corresponds with the left or right plug location on the charging station. At this point, press the start button right here on the bottom of the screen. It will then say that the car and station are talking. Make sure the plug is firmly connected into the car's charging port. Here's a view of this charging station screen. Now it shows that the connection is successful. The charging stats screen also is shown. Time elapsed and energy dispensed is on the left, state of charge in the middle, and kilowatt power is on the right. I apologize, most of this video is hard to see due to the sun's glare. Let's see how fast we charge today. I arrived with 1% or 2 miles on the battery and will charge up to 100% for this test. And it's starting to ramp up rapidly. One of the annoying things about the EVgo charging station is that the screen reverts to the home page after about 3 minutes. I didn't realize this at first and wasn't able to video the charger's kilowatt and percentage uninterrupted over time. I did take some photos and videos at major increments as well as a video from the car's touchscreen. Everything seems to be going well until this message pops up. It appears that there's an error with the charger. I tried to reconnect, but it didn't work. And at this point, it took 5 minutes and added 14.8 kilowatt hours to the pack with a 20% state of charge. So I had to move the car over to the next spot. Then I used the left charge cable and went through the same process I showed you before to start charging. It connected and started charging with no issues. I also looked at the messages in the car and it pointed out that the charging station on the right side had an issue. Charging state reports error, check station for error code or message. However, there were no further issues with the left side charging cable. On the car screen, it was hovering around 200 to 203 kilowatts during the first 25 minutes. It reached a high of 204 kilowatts. The kilowatt rate started to drop around 30% state of charge. From 170 to 150 and to the 130s fairly quickly. Here are some screenshots for 45, 55, 61, 65, and 70. And then 75, 80, 85, and then 90 things definitely slow down over 90%. So I started at 1% and went up to 20% for a short gap and then 20% and went all the way to 99% when the charging station ended the session, which is close enough to 100% for me. And now the results from the back-to-back -back charging sessions. The miles added for the first session was 60 and then for the second session, 237 for a total of 297 miles added. 
The first session took 5 minutes from 1 to 20% and 64 minutes from 21 to 99%, so a total of 69 minutes or 1 hour and 9 minutes. It cost $1.61 for the first session and $19.63 for the second session for a total of $21.24. And to be complete, we added 14.8 kilowatt hours in the first session and 55.1 kilowatt hours in the second for a grand total of 69.9 kilowatt hours. Here's a summary of the charging sessions. This chart does a nice graphic of the charging curve over time, kilowatts on the y-axis and battery pack percentage on the x-axis. I reached a max charging rate of 204 kilowatts the highest rates occur from 5 to 25 percent of the battery pack. This chart shows kilowatts over time. As you can see, the max rates occupy a small percentage of the time charging. The charging curve drops fairly rapidly from 25 to 40 percent, levels off a bit, and then gets steeper again at around 65 percent. Although this test went from 1% up to 99%, that's not usually what I do when I travel. I try to go from 5 to 10% up to 70 to 80%. Using the data from this charge, going from 10 to 70% would take only 21 minutes, which is about 180 miles. The final chart shows miles added over time. This started at 2 miles and ended at 299 miles. So in conclusion, as I showed in the unboxing, this adapter is virtually the same as the one Tesla offers and has the same build quality and feel. What more can I say? It works well with my local CCS station and will come in very handy on long distance trips for those situations where a Tesla supercharger is not available. It's less stressful to have so many options now. Tesla sells their adapter for $250 while EVBase offers their adapter for the best deal I've seen so far for a CCS adapter, $189. If you're interested in this item, see the link in the video description. Even better, use my code RANGER for another 10% off, which I think makes it an amazing deal. Only $171.10 with free 5-7 to seven day shipping. Very cost effective way to double the amount of charging stations available to you. Well, that wraps up this video of the unboxing and testing of the EVBase CCS adapter. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Oh, and if you stay to watch, the charging session from the Tesla screen is shown at 50 times speed.